Hello again and welcome to the World Forge Game Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a big thank you to Gab Simek for sending in some awesome pictures of his Imperial Guard army. This is the Cadium 117th Viridian Garrison, the Spade Company. These guys are ready to crush the enemy between that beneath their iron treads, and probably between the iron treads. And uh, I believe it. You know, I believe it. That, I have to say, you've done an absolutely fantastic job of the colour scheme of this army, Gab. Looks really good. I love the sort of, the matching, it also slightly contrasting uh, vehicles and infantry. Uh, that Shadow Sword looks really, really good. And I also love the plasma effects, especially that you've gone for on those executioners. You, you, have, a, you have a respectful amount of infantry, although I, of course, would always say that more infantry is better. But that's just because I'm a madman that likes running 250 people. In my infantry, in my Imperial Guard army. But, I have to say, Gab, you've really done the Emperor proud and your army does look really, really good. Thank you for sending these pictures in. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. Can't promise I'll use everyone's pictures. Yeah, hold my hand up. But I do try and use as many as possible. So, uh, yeah. If you're interested in me using your pictures and you want to show off your awesome hobby and painting work, put them on the Facebook page and I'll try my best to use them. So without further ado, let's get into today's tactics video. We're going to be talking about Mordian Iron Guard. Crazy, I know. On a channel called Mordian Glory, we're actually for once going to talk about Mordian Iron Guard. Well, what we're going to be, well, I've been doing some analysis. You know, I've been I've been loading some figures into the cogitator. I've been consulting battlefield reports and debriefings, and uh, I'm I'm starting to think that Mordians might be quite anti-meta now what do i mean by that okay what do i mean by that well and i know obviously i, of, I often talk about these things on uh, on the channel meta versus anti-meta it's like it's like matter versus anti-matter but what it, you know what is meta well meta is what is the current you know top thing the current trend which is dominating all the tournaments now there's a way to try and win a tournament the way to try and be competitive and you can either be meta as in you're following the cutting edge and you're trying you know you're trying to find a uh, you're trying to take those on take those nine elder flyers or you're trying to take those iron hands or to weigh the win a tournament is you can be anti-meta which is kind of risky but it means like if i you think you say to yourself i'm going to a really high level tournament and i know that everyone's going to bring in their a game and i know that the current in thing at the moment is x so i'm going to build a list which is really good at countering x and so it will be a curveball that no one will see coming and you see these kinds of lists pop up all the time um you see lists that you know people say they're not very good but then somehow they win a tournament with it crazy but then the problem with be it's the problem with being anti-meta is the same as being uh, trying to chase the meta is if the meta then changes the anti-meta becomes less effective um now i'm starting to suspect that mordians are kind of anti-meta uh, at the very least you know mordians are extremely anti-assault and there's a way to capitalize on that See what 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 do I mean what do I mean by anti-meta and anti-assault? So Mordi Guard can shoot just as good as the majority of regiments out there. I mean, yes, Cadians are the best at shooting, but Mordi Guard still they're a guard army in the day. They still shoot the crap out of things. And um, the interesting thing is is that Marines are very in at the moment. Marines are very in at the moment. And what we're seeing more and more of with Marines is uh, Primaris. Primaris for days. And what we're starting to see with Marines is, is this tendency for armies to take lots and lots of elite infantry. Uh, or a few elite vehicles. E Repulsa executioners for a while were, you know, really hot shit. But... They're not as in anymore. They're not as in. They're still good, but they're not as in anymore. So, what you're seeing a lot of these days is Primaris infantry. Tabletop tactics. If you, unless you've been living under a rock, you know who tabletop tactics are. 
their latest battle report. Tactical battle report, top tier competitive battle report was uh, a all pretty much all infantry, all marine, pure marine, raven guard, primaris list. And it was taking on one of the best elder lists out there, which is you know elder flyer spam with uh, some dark reapers and wave serpents and psychic shenanigans, and with harlequin uh, haywire bikes. Um, so we had a you know we had you know a, one of the we had a space marine list, which is all elite infantry going up against one of the best uh, um, eldar lists, and it was you know the game was incredibly close the factions were, were very very balanced and the marines weren't actually as good as they could have been they could have been pumped up even more now but what you notice about the thing with elite infantry is and you're seeing a lot of people gearing up for taking on primaris now you're seeing a lot of people which are taking go big or go home style weapons because either you come across a primaris guy who's running repulse executioners so you need that anti-tank or you're coming up against Primaris guy who's running a lot of, you know, hardcore multi-wound infantry, uh, which are going to be difficult to kill because they've, you know, they've got like stealthy. So you need, again, go big or go home weapons because you need to punch through. You know, your small arms, just, your small arms just really aren't that effective against Primaris. Say one thing for them, you know, they really, they do absorb a lot of small arms. It takes twice as many small arms to kill a Primaris as just a regular Marine. They're twice as resilient to that shit. So because of that, people are bringing a lot more punchy weapons, things that just basically get past the Primaris' uh, main strength, which is multi-wound. So because of that, people are running much more big guns. They're gearing up for mech and they're gearing up for killing elite infantry, which means as a result, they're not taking as much anti-horde, which means enter stage left, the pure infantry guard army. In this case, the Pure Infantry Guard, Mordian Iron Guard Army. Now, the thing with Marines, the thing with Marines is that, because especially Primaris Infantry Armies, is that they have to be doing something in every phase. Because you're paying a lot for that Bolter Marine. He might be a souped-up, roid raged Bolter Marine, but you're still paying a lot of points for him. So he's got to be able to, you know, shoot you in the shooting phase and... Bonk you, you know, bash you in the uh, in the assault phase because he wants to take advantage of his bolter discipline, or he wants to be taking advantage of his shock assault, or if you're ultra he wants to take advantage of both. So the point is, is that Marine, Marines now, these primaris infantry armies that we're seeing coming forward, they're marching across the field, they're or they're infiltrating forward, and they're bolting the crap out of you, and um, they're charging into combat with you and where the majority of the damage you're seeing is actually in marines is, is close combat crazy and there's a lot of not just with marines but with many competitive armies out there you're seeing that actually assault is king in a casual game of 40k shooting tends to be king but in the competitive scene you will be surprised you will face assault army after assault army after assault army and it's only occasion it's only the occasional shooting army that you face like tau for example so because of this assault is really making a big comeback because the point of assault is you take some damage getting in there but gives you board control because you're pushing into the enemy and assault tends to be a lot more devastating you know assault weapons tend to be a lot more devastating than shooting weapons it's only the occasional thing like you know tower which just take it too far or guard as well so the thing about so with what we've got is a lot of elite infantry and people gearing up to take on elite infantry and mech as a meta and we've got um a lot of people in the meta at the moment which are taking mostly assault uh, armies or at least assault heavy armies more nine guard pure infantry more nine guard is totally the opposite of both of those things so you're a horde army so if someone wants to hit your guardsman with you know even if it's an auto cannon even if it's an auto cannon or if they want to hit your guardsman with uh, a las cannon or equivalent or if it's eldar you know eldar, the, the big hotness right a disintegrator or a star cannon you don't really care Disintegrate my guardsmen, star cannon my guardsmen, auto cannon, last cannon. You don't really care because unless someone's bringing all of the anti infantry, you're really, really going to just not really feel it. <coughs> if you're running a pure infantry guard armor like I do, competitively, 250 models, 
your opponent's got to kill 50 guys turn every turn consistently. That just doesn't really happen. They might kill 50 the first turn, they might kill 50 the second turn, but then the third turn, the fourth turn, the fifth turn, they're really not going to kill 50 infantry unless you know, they've got an amazing list. Now, um, so people, but people aren't bringing the weapons to deal with quite as much horde anymore. So, you're, so straight away your light infantry horde is slightly anti-meta. And then, you know, people are trying to, uh, you know, especially marine armies, are trying to get up close and punch you in the face. Well, guess what? You do not want to charge more than Iron Guard. You don't. They have a 5 plus Overwatch. If I take a more than Iron Guard squad, put a plasma pistol in there, two, uh, a plasma gun, and an auto cannon, or heavy bolted to keep it cheap, plus all those uh, last guns in there as well, which are going to have, you know, 14 last gun shots from a 10 man squad, what you're looking at is on the way in, you're going to get hit by at least one plasma shot. And you're probably going to get hit by an auto cannon shell as well. That's just statistically. What if you get a little lucky? Well, with a little bit of luck on your side, you're going to get hit by two plasma shots and an auto cannon shot. It's not out of the realms of possibility. Anyone who anyone who uses five plus Overwatch or has had to phase five plus Overwatch will tell you it is really horrible. Uh, so they're going to get hit, and you're not hitting them with like a couple of oh, I hit you with a couple of bolter shots on the way. No, you're hitting them with plasma. You're hitting them with auto cannons. That means when you hit them, you're pretty much guaranteed to wound them. And in the case of plasma, and you've overcharged it, of course, if you hit them and then you wound them, they're not going to make that save. Well, they're very unlikely to. You've just killed a marine on the way in. Then you've got a 50/50 chance of killing another marine on the way in with the auto cannon. And then you've got your 14. Las guns on top. Now, if they're close enough, you've got a frag grenade in there. So you look at another five last gun hits, and the, you know, and potentially a couple of wounds. You've got the you you could easily between all that kill a couple of primaries on the way in. Between the auto cannon or the heavy bolter and the last guns, they'll probably kill one, and the plasma weapons will probably kill another one. Primaries are normally filled in like five to six man squads. So. On the way in, assuming it's a typical five-man Primaris squad, on the way in, they've just lost two guys. That's, that's, that assault has now been blunted. Now, those three Marines make it in. And yeah, they've still got ten attacks, because you know they've got two attacks each. Plus they've charged shock assault, plus they've got a sergeant, so they've got ten attacks. So they'll probably kill a couple of your guys. You'll probably kill, even if they kill, you know, uh, they hit with uh, six or seven attacks. They hit with seven, they'll wound with five. You'll make one or two saves. They'll kill like three or four guardsmen. Yeah, you know, okay, they'll kill almost half a squad. But then you've got a power sword in that. You're a Mordian, so you've got a, you've got a power sword in that squad. Okay. And a power sword plus all the other remaining attacks, because you did take a priest, right? Uh, you're going to kill another Primaris, which means on the enemy's turn when they've charged in, statistically, you have a decent chance of killing three out of five Primaris when that charge you. And in return, you're going to lose three to five guardsmen that is a trade you can that's a trade you would do in your own turn let alone in the enemy's turn so it really you know when i say more you know mornings are really anti-assault and anti-meta they really are and this is something i really i want to talk about which is this and, and this is not just for um no this is this is, this is what i'm going to talk about in another video so we talk about sort of more nine I've been anti meth now. I'm going to talk about it in another video because I want to keep the videos relatively short, sharp, and punchy. We're going to be talking about I often I do this sort of every six months. What is the best loadout for your Imperial Guard squad going forward? And honestly, going forward, you want to be looking at any you want to be cramming as many two wound damage uh, two damage weapons into your army as possible. Anyway. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you think more nine guard have the potential to be quite anti meta? I personally do. Okay, I'm facing a lot of assault armies these days, and more often than not, I feel like I can hold my own against any shooting armies, because at the end of the day, I'm still guard, I'm shooting. And assault armies, which are kind of in vogue at the moment, really don't want to be facing me. It's really not good for them. What do you guys think? At the, if, at the moment, do you think there's any sort of sleeper, hidden guard regiments out there other than the usual Katachans and Cadians? You know, Talan, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Talan these days. Okay, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the more nine guard, and of course, I'll see you guys next time.